Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the program that uh, we were working on yesterday. Okay, and, and since then, many of you have created a similar program. Okay, and talk about the last two components, right? So we've gone through, and I'll just review kind of what we've done, right? So this is the just reviewing this, this part here where we've gone through and the individual details, right? First, we had to um, go through everything else, right? Going through the design, identifying our, our tract entity, our um, relationship types. We're going to get through that uh, next week. Our option sets, um, any of the attributes, right? And we also discussed the data elements, um, the number, and then we looked at the design again to discuss what we'd actually implement inside of DHIS2 along with the scheduling and everything. And then, you know, we're kind of at the stage where we're going through finally able to build the program after all these component pieces were in place, right? So um, we're just following this kind of stepwise approach uh, to create our program. So we entered in our program details, entered in our enrollment uh, details, added in our tracked entity attributes, which, you know, need to be made before we design the program. Uh, then we added in our program stages, and this is kind of where we got to um, yesterday, right? Before before the, the time was kind of up, right? So after this is all done, after we've created our program stages, okay, and, and you make sure that within those program stages, you know, you assign your data elements um, and you create your sections um, for your form, okay? And you enter in the appropriate details. Um, for, you know, there's several pieces of information that Pamela had reviewed. Um, the other day, and then we also provided links to the documentation because there are so many options um, that can be performed when creating your program. All right, so just depending on which stage you were looking at, there were different settings. We talked about this aspect of scheduling for some of the stages, for example. Some of them had, uh, you know, two to three months scheduling, so that was 60 days, for example, in this particular stage. Um, some of you were asking about the end of treatment stage, right? That's this one here, okay? Um, the big thing here is to, uh, the other ones were auto-generated, which meant once you open the program, you see those program stages available. We didn't automatically generate this end of treatment one, and we didn't put any scheduling. We just put zero here, right? Because if they die, if they're lost to follow up, if something happens unexpectedly, or if they're cured before receiving their final phase of treatment, um, then they can end their treatment, right? Um, so that can happen at any point in time. So there's no real scheduling associated with that. Um, and then for the last stage, we also have this special option here ticked, ask user to complete the program when the stage is complete, because they've gone through all kind of the complete kind of continuum of care as it relates to this particular program, right? And these different options, you know, I'm, I'm talking about it as, as it is specific to this example, but you know, you just kind of got to go through for each stage you create for every program you're looking at and decide, you know, which options you would apply um, you know, whether or not you want something automatically generated. If it's scheduled, for example, it's often a good idea. So you can kind of see um, where, where the date is based on your enrollment date, for example, um, and, and kind of have a look at how things um, are viewed, right? So we created the stages and now we're gonna move to the access tab, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of explain that again. Um, so we're all on the same page here, all right? So in the access tab, what we do is we assign the organization units um, of the program, and we can assign some sharing settings. And we're going to actually cover sharing settings in a lot more detail next week, um, or sorry, I think tomorrow. Even. So, so we will go over some um, additional components of sharing, but at minimum, we have to kind of apply some minimum sharing settings to the program so we can see it in, in tracker capture, um, so we can enter um, data because there's kind of different sharing settings for different objects um, that we can use um, for our program itself, right? And if any of you had um, exposure to creating an event program, for example, you know, the sharing settings that we discuss here are very similar um, to what we would discuss in um, using an event program. And if this sharing concept is kind of new to you and, you know, you're not even familiar with the term necessarily, as it applies to DHIS2, we'll explain it briefly um, right now, just so you have some understanding. Okay, so the first thing we do is we uh, assign the program to our organization units, right? And this is basically allowing us to say, um, well, where do we want um, people to be able to access this program when they enter data? And thus, you know, when we perform analysis, it'll also be our lowest level available 
um, when we pull out information um, when we're performing analysis functions. Okay, um, so in this case, um, what has happened here? Um, so there's many different ways we can assign um, this to the organization units, and this is very similar as if we're working with aggregate data sets or for working with event programs. Actually, the process is very similar, right? We just kind of select where we want these data capture or data entry organization units to be um, and also affecting our analyses, right? So we can go through and use any of these toggles um, associated um, with the access panel. So we can, for example, assign the program to all organization units within a specific level. So let me just deselect them, right? So this is what you'd see by default, zero organization units selected, right? So you'd have to decide um, which organization units you assign this to, right? So you can just branch out your, your tree by clicking on the, the arrow buttons, right? And then you'll see the levels um, within that. And if you want, you can just kind of select one by one, but chances are you're going to be assigning this to, to many orga organization units, maybe um, all the hospitals in your system, maybe all the facilities in your system, uh, everything at a certain level within your system, right? Um, that can be quite cumbersome to do one by one, right? So that's why we have these toggles here, the organization unit level or the organization unit groups, right? So if I deselect again, and let's say I wanted to assign them to all of my, um, all of my private hospitals, for example, I could select that group um, and then click on select, and then it'll go through um, and assign them just to the private hospitals um, in my hierarchy, right? And I could continue and I could assign them to more groups if I just wanted to do a subset, so if I wanted to do district hospitals as well, yeah, I could do that. And you'll see it just adds it on. It doesn't remove the previous um, assignment. It'll only do that if I deselect or start to deselect, right? So I can deselect within a group, for example, deselect my district hospitals. It'll remove the assignment from the district hospitals, right? Now, often a common way um, to do it if we're assigning it to many organization units is to use the level function, right? So for example, you will, depending on your system, you know, it might not look anything like this. The names for all the levels, uh, maybe country is the only one that's shared and maybe all your other levels are named differently. Maybe there's local names for the levels as well, okay? But let's just pretend that we, you know, are assigning everything to the lowest level in our hierarchy. And in our case, that's the facility. So if we were to select facility and say select, it'll just assign it to all the organization units in that facility, okay? So what this does is when I go to tracker capture or when I go to analysis eventually, right, because I've entered data, um, if I enter data, then I can perform analysis at the facility level with data that's present. I can enter data at the facility level by selecting this in tracker capture, right? So this is the first step for our access to assign these uh, the, the, the program to the organization units where we want people to enter our data, all right? The second step is then to apply um, sharing settings, all right? So we're going to talk more about sharing settings, um, you know, later on, as I mentioned, okay? But what these sharing settings basically allow us to do is um, give us the secondary level access, right? Of, of what actual metadata we can access within the system and what we can do with that, that information, right? How can we interact with certain components of the system, right? So let's say in our case, a user has access to all the organization units within third district, right? Now, what we have to do next is kind of say, well, within this program, when they access this program at a facility in third district, what can they do, right? Can they enter data? Can they just view the data? Um, can they just see the metadata you know, um, associated with the program? Okay, um, here, this is where we kind of define this. And we'll talk about this more. Um, to kind of suss this out and describe it in more detail um, going forward, right? But if I open up this dialog, okay, and, and hopefully some of this is a little bit familiar to you because, you know, you, you would see the same thing when working with event programs, right? And what you'll see by, by kind of default often is that it might look like something like this or like this, okay, where public access um, is can edit and view and the data is set to no access and it's not assigned to any users or user groups. So all I did here is I clicked on the program, okay, to bring up that dialog, okay? And I'm just setting it to its default, um, what, you would, what you might see um, in, a, in a system if you're creating a program for the first time, okay? So what we can do from here, and if I just select this uh, setting, 
you'll see the different levels of sharing, right? We have one um, setting for metadata and, and one setting for data, right? So the metadata is, of course, you know, all the um, variables and everything associated with the program. In this case, it's just applying settings to the program itself. So when I say metadata, I'm saying, you know, the program itself, are people going to be able to see it or not, right? Because if they can't see it, if I say no access, for example, then you're not going to be able to see the program, even though it's assigned to one of those organization units. If I have access to one of those and there's no metadata sharing applied, I won't be able to see the program um, in my selectors at all. Okay. Um, and same for the data, right? Then I won't be able to view any data associated with the program at all um, if, if I say no access, right? And often for the public user, so what we mean by public user is basically, you know, anyone who logs into the system, right? So if I have a login and I have permissions to go into Tracker Capture and, and either enter data or view some of the programs, right? What happens to that user type, okay? Are they able to see things by default or not? Now to segment our system, we often say uh, we just assign this no access, and then we give specific users or user groups access to the, the components they need, right? Especially in integrated systems, this can help a lot. It's not really, well, depending on your policies, right? It doesn't have to be something that's masking the data, but it can really help an end user kind of navigate the system, right? If they don't have access to all these things, they're not really going to use, okay? So what we do is then, as I mentioned, we, we actually take this and assign it to specific entities, right? So either users or user groups. So I could, for example, just assign it uh, to my user, which is this one here, okay? Um, and you would have your own user that you know, you've been logging in with for a couple of days um, in, in order to kind of assign appropriate sharing settings um, for the program, right? The other thing that you'll notice is once you do this, well, well you won't notice it, but the others will, is, is your program will disappear from their list, right? Because we're working in an integrated setup right now. There's a lot of users um, making their programs and you're probably, you're able to see, you know, the program they've made. Um, but once you set up the sharing setting, they won't be able to see your program anymore, okay? Um, in maintenance. So what we can do is for your own user, you just find your user, right? just type in, you know, your username, for example, here, or the demo one that I'm using um, here, okay? And then I select, you know, you can apply, sorry, I should say, uh, once I select this user, I, I can apply the sharing settings here before I add them in, okay? Because whatever I select here, that's what's going to be applied. So if I look at the person here, they have this metadata connected and view and data no access, right? But what I wanna do is I want this user because they're my user, right? I want to assign them basically metadata can edit and view. This means they can modify the metadata for the program, right? And then I'll say data can capture and view because this means they can enter data and they can also view data associated with the program essentially, okay? We're gonna cover these in more detail, but for now, um, I, I, uh, just to make sure you can access your program um, in Tracker Capture um, in, in this exercise as well as the assignment. Okay, we just want to make sure you apply the appropriate sharing settings, but we will talk about the implications and different combinations of all this stuff um, in a bit, bit more detail. All right, now once this is done, okay, and I'll so we'll select apply. Okay, what I want to do then is basically, um, you'll see here this, uh, you know, kind of notification that says this differs from the program, all right? Um, because um, the sharing settings that I've applied here, if I open this up, oh, well now it's the same, but it'll look like this, I guess. All right. So let's say that this is the default, that what you're seeing, okay? Public metadata, read and write access, no public data access or something like this, okay? so. Because you can apply sharing settings both to your program as well as your program stages. And we're going to talk about the implications of this later on because you can do some very interesting things by um, segmenting off your access and, and applying different sharing settings to your stages than to your program. But for now, we're just going to apply the sharing settings uniformly. Okay. So our user is going to have the same level of access to our program and our program stages. Now, once we've done it to our program, we can just cascade it down, okay? So we've set it all up correctly for our program for the moment, and we want the sharing settings for our program stages, each of the program stages we made to be the same, okay? So by default, they're all selected, but if they weren't, you know, it might look like this. You could just select all, 
It'll select all the stages. And then what I'm gonna to do to cascade the sharing settings down is select this apply to selected stages. And what that's, if I just click on this, okay. What it's going to do is take the sharing settings that have applied to the program and cascade those down. So they're exactly the same for each of my program stages. Okay, and you can see now that the, it's, this is the same settings that I've applied already, okay? So for now, we're just gonna keep the sharing settings the same between the program, program stages. We will talk about what it looks like um, when these are different later on, all right? But once this is done, okay, so I've applied all my access, I click on save. And what I can do, I'll just go back to my program real quick actually, and I'll just modify the version. Um, Pamo briefly touched on this variable, but it kind of forces you to download the latest version um, of this form. Um, and, and in this case, it'll have you know the organization units have assigned and the sharing settings, for example, as says new um, parts of that version of the form. Um, what I can also do if I'm really paranoid and I want to make sure, make sure things work, is just go to my cache here, clear it out. Okay. And then I'll go to tracker capture after I've assigned those sharing settings. And then I'll attempt to find my program, right, in data entry. So I assign it to the facility level. So depending on where you sign it, I can see it here. Uh, I'm able to register a case. I'm able to do this because I applied that, that data level access. Data can capture and view, right? So because I said my user can enter data, now I'm able to um, go into Tracker Capture and enter this data um, at this program level, okay? Um, so I can enter in some information, for example. And then hopefully, you know, because I applied sharing settings access levels to my stages, I should be able to interact with those as well. Okay, so then, you know, you can try to test your program. And, and I, I know some of you are having some challenges, so we'll try and help you through those um, now. Okay, but you can see here that when I look at the program now, right, I see, for example, this is the day it was registered. This event is scheduled 60 days, roughly. This is roughly 150 days um, from the date of uh, the date that I see here. Okay, and then I have, if I go to add a stage, I'm able to add this end of treatment stage at any date, basically. Okay, and it's not scheduled, it's not automatically generated because I didn't tick that box, okay? Now I can enter data in each of these stages because this is just inherited the same level of access that my user had um, from my program, okay? So I have data can capture and view access to all these program stages and I have metadata can view, which means I can see all the variables, okay? And I can interact with all the metadata, all the option sets, you know, everything, all the data elements. Um, in the program itself, because uh, um, that's how it's been assigned in, in this scenario, right? I can see everything within this program stage, basically. Um, there, there's some more layers to this, theoretically, but we're not going to get into that right now. But at least because I said, okay, this, this user can enter data um, into this program stage and see the metadata for this, this particular stage. And I've done it the same for all three, right? So if I were to enter data here, I can also see the information. Same for this one. And then same for end of treatment, right? They're all the same because I've entered that information, okay? Or, or sorry, I've set up the configuration so they can enter information, right? Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of the, the last step in this process is to make sure, uh, here, let me just change some of these dates so it's in order still. Some of you were asking about this. Yeah. Okay, so that's the last step in this process. Um, when you, after you create your program stages and everything, okay, you should assign the access, uh, access control. And one thing I mentioned yesterday um, also is that, you know, sometimes if you want to kind of see the, the program kind of as it's progressing, like maybe you've created one program stage and you just want to check it out, right? You just want to kind of see, does it, does it make sense um, anymore or not? And, uh, in, in order to do that, you know, if I make one program stage, you might just want to go ahead and assign some access to the program right away, even if you have, maybe you have two or three other stages or, or whatever, several other stages you're still working on. Um, what we've done in this scenario is kind of create the whole thing 
and then go check it in tracker capture. You could enter some data, test it out, make sure it's kind of meeting our specifications. But you don't have to, you know, you can kind of move back and forth between those processes, right? You can make this stage and then you can assign, assign it to some organs, assign some sharing settings, check it out, make sure it's that stage is okay, and then you can go back and continue with your configuration. Um, especially if it's kind of a larger configuration and you're trying to keep track of several components. So you can jump around between these two steps um, a little bit um, if you need to, right? But you need a program stage in place before you can kind of go in and view the program. And then you need to sign, assign some level of access between the organization units and sharing um, in order to view the program um, in, in the actual uh, tracker capture, all right? So, so that's kind of the last component of this. And if you hadn't had a chance to kind of complete the configuration um, of your program, you know, these are the kind of final two exercises, I think, um, in that learner's guide. Um, you could have a look at kind of going through those. If you've tried to do this for your program and you're not seeing what you expect um, in data entry, maybe you can troubleshoot a little bit and see if this was the reason. If it's not, you know, let us know and we'll work through it. We can access your program even and have a look together. You can let us know on Slack, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to give everyone a little bit of time, okay, um, in order to work through the last part of the learner's guide, the last couple exercises, in case you hadn't had a chance um, to complete your program or you're kind of looking at um, um, completing the, the program here, right? So if I look at exercise 12 and 13, the last two exercises, okay, in the worksheet, uh, in the learner's guide, it okay, just goes over assigning access and kind of walks you through step by step in case you missed a step when I was presenting. Um, and it will we'll allow you to kind of go through that. And then after you're done, you know, like I said, make sure you go to tracker capture and check if everything's appearing correctly. If it's still not, and you've kind of gone through and checked everything, you've assigned your data elements, your attributes, you've assigned your sharing settings, assigned it to organization units, um, you know, let us know and we'll, we'll try and walk you through, you know, we can, we can communicate with you. Okay, just the uh, best way will be on Slack, I think, if there are questions about that. All right. So give everyone um, just about an, another 10 minutes before we come back together, okay, to give it a try um, and go through these two exercises. Um, and then, uh, we'll, I'll, then I'll introduce the assignment, that graded assignment. All right. So if there are any questions about anything, um, just let us know um, on Slack, uh, preferably. But of course, we'll also answer in the Zoom chat if needed. 